fam, it's your girl Gladys, aka Is That Your Hair, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, make sure you tap that subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss anything coming up. And if you've been rock with me for a minute, what's up, what's good, and welcome back. Today it is Small Talk Saturdays, and it's also Is That Your Hair holiday. Today's special. Y'all know Small Talk Saturday is all about us chatting about things that are important to us on this channel and i know i've been a little bit inconsistent but i'm trying to get back on it this month and i wanted to do a series where i talk about my top 30 lessons i've learned by the age of 30. i have been 30 for almost a year now which is kind of crazy i'll be 31 in december on december 22nd wild so i decided to collab with my home girl saw life shannon hello <laughs> So that we can have a nice chit chat with you all. Let me tell you about Shannon. I just love her whole essence. Her whole being is just everything to me. Not only does she slay these wigs, honey, but she is just so comical, entertaining, funny, smart, like, I could go on and on. Seeing Shannon really makes my day sometimes. Like when she uploads in the morning after I have to teach one of my lessons, you know, I'm able to like peek into her video and I'm like, all right, let me come right back. She just puts me in a good mood and I'm just so happy to bring her to Is That Your Holiday once again. So make sure as soon as you watch this video, go check out Shannon's channel. Click Soul Life down below in the description box and go send her some love. Tell her I sent you. Shannon, love you girl. Thank you so much for collabing with me on Is That Your Hair Holiday. Also today, I'm going to be showcasing a wig from Unice Hair. They sent over a headband wig and... I haven't tried this texture before, so I'm excited to see what it's about. All right, y'all, so this is the headband wig. This is the Water Wave texture in the 20 inches. And they also sent over some goodies, some headbands, of course, the pearl one, and this cute little goodie bag. Now, I reviewed a lot of headband wigs on this channel, so definitely check out my headband wig playlist down below. This basically comes with your typical headband here with the Velcro strap and it has one big comb in the front, one big comb in the back, and no adjustable straps. So I feel like usually the cats that are constructed this way are like more like an average size cat. And y'all already know how I feel about headband wigs. I love them, they're super easy, super convenient. And literally this is gonna take no time. <laughs> literally I'm just going to plop this joint on, just like this. Okay, hold on, wait a minute. <laughs> And this is it, y'all. I mean, I just popped her on and I was done. I didn't use any edge control today, but normally I like to use my She's Bomb edge control, which I absolutely love. Wow, how easy is this? Oh my goodness. Like, what? This is, this is why I rock with headband wigs. Like, seriously. What I'm gonna do is though, I am going to spray and wet this wig. And I love using my spray bottle here because it has a continuous spray. I'm gonna spray and we're gonna get into this chit chat. All right, y'all, so the first main lesson I have learned by the age of 30 is to save your money. I definitely remember in college, um, I did receive like maybe two refund checks and I think it totaled to like $4,000. And literally, I was able to like hold on to it for like two months. <laughs> and then your yeah, girl, that summer, I felt like I was balling. I don't even know what I was doing. Was I like even going out? I, I don't know. But can you imagine if I would have turned around and like put that in maybe a high interest savings account, maybe invested into some stock that was about to pop off at the time? That was like what, back in 2011? Oh my God. Like who knows what, what would have happened. So that's the main lesson for me. And I, I see, and even throughout my 20s, I feel like I was not saving adequately. Like I would save a little bit and then I would dip into my savings. Like there was no discipline, you know what I mean? And I feel like that's something I've learned, discipline. And this quarantine, I've been able to save like the most amount of money I've ever saved in my life, which is crazy to me. I'm like, wow, why did it take this long? But I guess it just took me like being forced to sit down and not going out so much because I do like to go out with friends and whatnot and actually like really take account into where my money is going. And so now I'm happy to say like, I set a very aggressive goal for my savings and I was able to reach like 
the five figure mark within this quarantine time. So I'm, I'm really, really proud of myself. And that's something that I kind of wish I was better about starting earlier on in my 20s, but I definitely learned a lesson by the time I was 30. <laughs> I'm not going back to that haphazard saving lifestyle again. I'm not. I definitely like the look of this while it's wet. This is cute. Another lesson I learned by the age of 30 is, yo, travel, please travel. Please study abroad in college. Like I wish I studied abroad when I was in school. I kept telling myself that I was, but for some reason I was getting very comfortable being on campus, being around my friends, being on my own. When it was time to actually fill out the applications and do it, I just, I wouldn't do it. And I look back at that time and wonder like, well, what if I did take my semester in Paris or whatever? By the way, I was born in Paris and I have yet to go back there as an adult, which is kind of crazy, but I will be back soon. A lot of y'all know that I really love to travel and I have been doing it more actively in the past, um, I would say in the past four or five years. So that that's awesome and I feel very blessed to have the means to do that. <sighs> but I just know that it's something I kind of wish I was doing more of earlier on. But trust me, your girl has learned that lesson. I'm gonna try out this pearl headband and see what it looks like. I don't know if I'm gonna like it, but we shall see. It's literally just pearls. Like, <laughs> okay, like, I mean, I guess if you tuck the headband underneath, um, that's what I would do with this. I don't know, it doesn't feel too secure. Mm -mm, I'm not feeling this. All right, so the third thing that I learned by the age of 30 is that trust and communication in relationships is so paramount. And I mean this throughout family, friends, and your significant other, whomever you're dating. I feel like in my relationships where there was a breakdown in trust, and I'm now I'm gonna talk about romantic relationships, it, it didn't last after that. I have been in a situation before where I was cheated on and that caused a very huge breach in trust and we didn't last after that. But for some reason in my mind, I kept thinking like, oh, you know, I can really like make this work. And even though I was very angry, I was acting like there was no other option. I don't know what I was thinking back then at 24. <laughs> but at 30, I understand that trust is literally everything. And it's very hard to repair. You know what I'm saying? If you get what I'm saying, definitely comment down below. Same goes with communication. If your communication within any type of relationship is haphazard, that relationship will deteriorate, period. And speaking of trust, this leads me to my fourth point. My fourth thing I learned by the time I was 30 is to stop looking through people's phones. <laughs> I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. I have looked through every single person's phone I've been with in my 20s. Absolutely ridiculous. Why? Now granted, in a situation where there was like dishonesty, okay, I understand I had that feeling something was going on, but it's just like, no. Like I am not an advocate for going through and breaching someone's privacy. I used to do it, but I, I'm not, I'm not about that life anymore. I feel like I've grown up in that I think if you feel like there is something inherently wrong or different within your relationship, I would hope that you would just communicate that. You see, we're getting back to that communication piece. Communicate it, and hopefully your partner is receptive and understanding to what you're feeling. And if they are not, then you might have to question whether you should be in that relationship. You see what I'm saying? But I know that where I am in my life right now, those feelings cease to exist at this point because I've been able to develop a, a bedrock of trust with my partner. You see what I mean? So if you find yourself wanting to look through his or her phone, sis, you just, just stop. <laughs> like, I know it can be tempting, but it, it's like, it's, it's not helpful in the long run. Honestly, there's definitely more mature things that you can do. And a lot of times I realize people who deal with that issue repeatedly, they're just not in the right relationship. All right, the fifth thing that I learned is that sometimes there isn't a next time. This was a hard lesson for me to learn because, you know, I feel like, especially when you're young, you always feel like you have more time to catch up with people, with family and friends. My grandfather, he was definitely a caretaker of mine and he passed away a few years ago. And I remember when he got sick, 
with cancer, you know, I felt like we had more time together and I would go visit him like, it was like a few times in that year when he first got sick. And I remember it was really hard for me to see him that way, but it was nowhere near compared to what would actually happen to him when he actually started to deteriorate and the cancer actually took over. And I was in denial for a while because I thought that he was going to get better. And it went from, oh, he has 14 months to like, oh no, he's not gonna make it past three months. And I was like, wait, what? Like the time span just get, kept getting shorter and shorter. And he, has been like my father figure in my entire life. So I remember literally he was put into the hospice, right? And I, I was with him numerous times that summer before he went to hospice. But when he was in there, I was like, I wanna go see him, but I'm scared to see him like that. So I was like putting it off. And I remember I finally was like, okay, you know, I'm just gonna go up there and see him that weekend. And then I remember I was supposed to leave Saturday morning and then Friday night my mom called me saying like I just visited grandpa and he doesn't look too good and I was like okay well I'll be there tomorrow and then he passed away that morning and I was really really hurt and really upset but also kind of relieved that he was out of his misery as well and also in hospice they 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 I mean they give you medication so that you don't feel the pain so I would like to think that he passed away peacefully. But I just say that to say like, you know, even then, even knowing that he was going into hospice, I still felt like I had more time for some reason. And that was like my first major death that I've had to deal with in my life. So that was interesting. So I guess I say that to say that we really don't have a lot of time, especially in the age of COVID, you don't really know what's gonna happen. So. If there's someone that you've been meaning to call, if there's someone that you have, you know, missed out on opportunities with, now is probably the time to take that chance because you just never know. Now I'm trying to see how I feel about this flipped over. Okay, flipped over, she's giving me a look. <laughs> okay, you guys here. And the cool thing about this unit, y'all, this is so affordable. It retails for about $120, $130 for this length, for 20 inches, like what? Oh my goodness, y'all need to, Unite Hair has some super, super affordable hair, and I love that. Okay, so the sixth thing I've learned by the age of 30 is to definitely be kind to yourself. The way you speak to yourself is what you will feel, it's what you become. In general, I'm pretty good at being positive, but I still have my days where, you know, I might beat myself up about not getting a certain amount of videos done for YouTube, or I might um, talk negatively to myself for procrastinating on something. And none of that's helpful. Your biggest and most important relationship that you have in your life is with yourself. So, so you have to treat yourself with kindness, with compassion, with gratitude. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, I, I've witnessed people who are very, can be very self deprecating and it affects every aspect of their life. So, I know for me, my love language is the words of affirmation and I try to fill myself with kind words so that way I, in turn, my output is me in my most positive form. The seventh thing I've learned by the age of 30 is to definitely date yourself. This ties into being kind to yourself. I know some people feel like they are unable to be alone and I'm an only child, so I guess I've never really had that feeling, but I do like hanging out with friends, at least pre-COVID. <laughs> I like going out with friends. And so I just think it's important to remember to be kind and give yourself the love that you deserve. One thing I love to do before, back when I used to go out, I used to love going to my neighborhood um, Tex-Mex restaurant. I used to order my enchiladas. I used to sit there and edit some videos. I'd have my little strawberry margarita and I'd be chilling there for like two, three hours just by myself. I think things like that are really important. Just spending time with yourself. Catching up on your favorite books. Do you know how many books I need to read, y'all? And I keep saying I'm gonna buy the book, but I also need to accept the fact that maybe I'm just gonna be a Kindle kind of girl for a while. Maybe that is what's gonna like force me to have that special time with myself when it comes to reading. So I think the more time that you spend with yourself, the more that you know about yourself, the better energy that you're able to attract to yourself. 
Now for this hair, if you want to use a mousse, I definitely recommend the Lotta Body Mousse. That is my favorite mousse right now. It smells super good and it's not crunchy. It leaves the hair very soft. I'm not using it right now because I'm kind of fine with just the wet look. But for those who want a more defined curl, definitely check out the Lotta Body Mousse. All right, so the eighth thing I learned by the age of 30 is to learn how to say no. Oh my gosh, one, of, one thing that I really had a hard time with in my 20s was just being a people pleaser and wanting to satisfy everyone. I think because my natural personality is one that brings people together, I often feel like that means I have to make everyone agree and that's not the case. So I found this happen with certain friendships, with relationships, just always feeling like like I couldn't say no to certain things. And that's not a good feeling. And I honestly, I feel like it can be cultural too. I grew up in a Caribbean household. And for those of you who are Caribbean or even African, you know that like the parentals, what they say is law. And as a child, I was like super obedient. Like the worst thing I could do was displease my parents. You know what I mean? So I think that's, good to a certain extent, but when you're an adult, you really need to kind of draw the line and understand what your boundaries are. And that's something that's been very big for me in my 20s, learning my boundaries, learning when to say no, learning what it feels like when someone is crossing my boundaries. And I've become really good at it now. If that's something that you're having an issue with, I think you really just have to pay attention to how your body feels. For example, when someone asks you to do something that you don't have to do and don't want to do, do you bend over backwards to try to like make it happen for them at the detriment of yourself? Because if you're doing it because you know you can and you have time and you want to help them out, cool. But if it's like pushing you back five steps from getting other things that you have to get done in your life, it sounds like that request is pushing a boundary and then you need to reassess whether you can actually do it. If you feel me on that, let me know in the comments because boundaries is something that I'm still working on actively, but I've gotten so much better with it now versus in my early 20s. The ninth thing I learned by the age of 30 is also how to say yes. And what I particularly mean is saying yes to different opportunities. I know for me, I originally did not go to school for teaching. I was in the school of communications and radio, TV, and film, and I thought I was gonna go like into broadcasting or something behind the scenes in TV production. And then I also majored in French too, so I wasn't sure where that was gonna take me. But the opportunity to teach came up and I said yes to it. And it turned out to be a very, very good thing for me because I just learned so many invaluable skills. My interpersonal skills grew even stronger. And also just my ability to explain things. You know, I feel like I've become almost mastered that for something that I'm good at. So me saying yes to that opportunity of teaching, even though it wasn't in my original plan, really panned out for me. And now it's like I'm teaching on YouTube. <laughs> Even me saying yes to the opportunity of YouTube, I didn't think I was gonna end up doing YouTube videos at all. I didn't think I was gonna be a content creator in this capacity. I was kind of shying away from it for a while, but because people kept asking me about it and also due to the encouragement of my girlfriend, I decided to finally start and I said yes. <laughs> and I'm so glad I did. The last thing I will say that I learned by the age of 30, at least for this video, is to listen to your inner voice. And I think we all know what that voice feels like, sounds like, tastes like. I mean, it's it's your intuition, right? It's your, your gut feeling when you know when something's right and when something's wrong. You have to listen to that. I've definitely been in situations where I thought where something just didn't feel right. Like, for example, with the girl that I was with that did cheat on me some years ago, I knew something wasn't right. I felt it, then there was evidence, you know what I mean? But I knew before the evidence presented itself. It was a, just a, a gut feeling. The day my grandfather passed away and my aunt called me several times, I knew something was wrong. Gut feeling. So I think I've been honing in on my inner voice a lot more throughout my 20s and now that I'm 30, I feel like I am, I feel like it's loud and clear. <laughs> it's just a matter of, am I gonna listen to it? And that's the same thing you should ask yourself. Like, are you ready to listen to yourself? That's where the trust comes in too. I know sometimes we make decisions that aren't always in our best interests. 
sometimes we make decisions that really hurt us. And it also causes a breakdown in the trust that we have in ourselves. But I think that that is something that can be repaired. So if that's something that you struggle with, if you, if you struggle with trusting yourself, it can be difficult, but it can be overcome. I think the more that you trust your inner voice and listen to it and things pan out favorably, the easier it'll be to listen. All right, y'all, so those are the 10 lessons I've learned. We'll be back next week with a part two. Shout out to Unite's Hair for sponsoring this video. I really enjoy this hair and it's super affordable and so easy. Like y'all saw it took me less than 30 seconds to even put this joint on. It was done. I really, really like this. And I think I like it better dry because it just gives me a fuller look. Make sure you go check out my girl, Shannon, AKA Saw Life. Her info is linked in the description box. I cannot wait to see what she has in store for her video. And if you're new from Shannon's channel, hey, how you doing? Make sure you tap the subscribe button and hit the notification bell so that you don't miss anything coming up. We are on our way to 20,000 subscribers and I'm super excited. Thank y'all for being here, for rock with me during this Dash Your Hair holiday. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.